Citizen Television. Welcome to another episode of the Planetary Persuader. My name is Cosmic Kev and I am your host and this is for the week beginning with the weekend Friday May 7th 2021 and then we're going to get good results and have somewhat accurate forecast anyhow and that's kind of the truth. The only thing I would say is is that because of the nature of Western culture people are very materialistic there's a lot more superficiality um, and there's less of a spiritual commitment with most Western astrologers from what I've viewed. And you, and you can attack me and say that. There's some really great spiritual Western astrologers. I won't deny that, you know. Um, I can think of a lot of, a lot of really good teachers out there. Um, the evolutionary ones like Jeffrey Green, uh, Stephen Forrest. Certainly they've got some really deep stuff to share. But, uh, you know, there's an arrogance too, you know. I, you know, there... Everyone thinks they're doing the right thing, and um, except for me, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Give me some entertaining astrological planetary knowledge here is what you're getting actually, and it doesn't get any. It's it seldom gets much better. All right. So I mean, with that said, I mean, there, let, let's see. Were there any other uh, significant planetary leanings or movings today? You know, because things do move, and. Um, <clears throat> like the moon did this weekend, so let me go look again and see if I've got anything else to report or retort uh, with. Oh yeah, there's some, there are some movements. Um, Mercury moved into Gemini, so Mercury and Gemini, it's like communication gets better, it gets more accurate, it's filling in the tropical zodiac, we'll say, you know, and then um, Jupiter is moving into Pisces, so we've got two planets moving in through their own sign which gives them more power and what is mercury mercury is a good student what is jupiter jupiter is a good teacher so our level of education and finding things out people these next few weeks are going to be mind-blowing um in terms of social discourse in terms of our knowledge of covid 19 in terms of our knowledge of healing in situations like this because mercury brings forth healing and jupiter gives us more travel so there's going to be less travel restrictions there's going to be more freedom and um <clears throat> you know i mean you know i i, I personally think that <sighs> shot vaccine passports are a violation of the nuremberg papers um, and we really forget quickly people are much are very willing to sacrifice their freedom for a temporary sense of safety. Shame on you. <laughs> all right, greetings Aries. Welcome to your horoscope. Well, you're all courageous and out there and and full it and for it, full of it and everything. And so what do we see happening for you this week? Well, I mean, just even looking at today, um, We've got a nice uh, sextile this morning between the moon and Venus. So for a Venus day, it's a lovely day, you know, and um, the love is falling. I mean, Venus is going to move also into Gemini this week. Oh, lordy, lordy, which is still sidereal, Taurus. Um, I think it's happening on Monday the 10th, but I can't be totally sure. No, it happens on Saturday at 7.01 p.m., so... Saturday, we got Venus and Gemini. You know, it's it's a really flirty, kind of a more superficial love, I guess they would say, in uh, Western astrology. But what the heck, we'll take it, you know. Any love is good love. So I took what I could get, and I took what I could get. And she looked at me with those big brown eyes. And she said, you ain't seen nothing yet. Boom, boom. Here's something. Here's something. 
Here's something you're, oh, you're never going to forget. You kind of stutter a little bit. Hey, baby. But, 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 <laughs> You know, Paul Stamets cured his stuttering, right? A big old dose of psilocybin. Yeah. It's a great story if you ever tune into Paul Stamets. Paul is a great guy. Um, so Aries, a lot of his focus is on finances. I think I said this last week. Some of that finance stuff is easing up. Um, and, um, you know, Mars is still in that debilitated fourth house position. So it's not like you're rocking the world as a business tycoon. But, I mean, you might be if you're like a real estate salesperson, you know, because sometimes the fourth house is about real estate and often houses, cars, any kind of fixed assets. So that's, you know... I think that's where the money is, and because most of the planets this week are still, uh, you know, they're on one side of the chart, more or less, it's kind of like, uh, um, it's hard to see other people's points of view, so keep an open mind, you know, keep an open heart, because people are often wrong, you know, and... Um, <clears throat> And people are often scared too. It's it's that scared thing, you know. You gotta avoid the scaries. Okay, greetings, Taurus. Welcome to your your horoscope. Well, I mean, we've got Sun and Uranus conjoined each other. I mean, it's um the little revolutionary in you, the rebel in you, is more out there. The trickster, the coyote. There's a lot of sudden change. There's sudden genius thoughts that come up too in this. Um, but you know, you look at this, and all the planets are mostly between Pluto and Mars. The only thing that isn't there right now is good old south node of the moon in Sagittarius. And so, in some ways, and that's in the eighth house. So it's like, really trust your intuition, Taurus. What are you thinking about this? What does this feel like for you? Did you ever, like, think, this is going to happen? I don't think this feels good. I don't think I should be here. And then all of a sudden you're like, no, I'm not going to do this. I actually have one Taurus friend that's a little bit older than me um, that during the Vietnam conflict, he was drafted, he was registered to go, had to go in New York, and he was there, signed up and in order with um, the troops to get on the plane and head out there. And um, he just decided, I'm going to go to the bathroom. And then he was like, well, he's in the bathroom. He says, i got to get out of here. I'm going to go. And he just did, and for some reason they never found him. It was like it was great because he's still alive, and uh, he just kind of followed his heart and his intuition. Says this isn't going to be good for me, you know. It probably wouldn't have been. <laughs> yeah, that's all I could say, you know. And so sometimes you have to, you have to do that, you know. Sometimes you have to break the rules because you know what's good for you. <clears throat> all right, they don't. And Venus is now moving to your second house, so. There is money, there's things involving your family, things involving your throat, but I, I feel like you're going to eat good food, you're going to make some money, and um, you're going to do something crazy. I just get, I get that. You're going to go into cray-cray land a little bit. All right. Greetings, Gemini. Well, lo and behold, Gemini, here we are, sun's in the 12th house. Um, so it's like it's best to kind of take it easy, just don't put yourself way too out there. Um, because, you know, you don't want to do, be a part of your undoing. You see, 12 house transits are often part of our undoing. And, you know, with Uranus there, Uranus can actually turn on the intuition button in the 12th house, but it also makes you want to rebel against institutions like hospitals and prisons and, you know, the monastery, big places, you know. It could be, it could turn out to be like a Jim Jones event if you're not careful, you know. Um, Jim Jones. I guess if you're not really old school, you'll look that up. Um, you know, what happened in Guyana back in 1979, 78, something like that. It was a while ago, you know. It was, it's going back there, folks. And, you know, half of you viewers weren't even born yet, so I, I don't expect you to know about this. Uh, <clears throat> but he was a very charismatic guy, and he really loved animals, and he loved God, and he loved socialism, you know, and he was an interesting character. I got, you know, and I, I don't know. He might have been like one of those agents of, you know, less than perfect intentions. Yeah. Uh, but, but for Gemini, you know, Venus is moving into your first house Saturday. So, I mean, the love train is, to mount, is about to make a stop. It's about, you know, love train's about to stop, and it's going to get off in your town. 
and, and you're going to feel a little better about yourself. You're going to know what to say at the right time. You're going to know what to do. Even though, yeah, you're hemmed in by Mars and Uranus. I get that. You know, you're not... Crazy stuff can happen, and, and you got to be ready for anything. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying cover yourself up in bubble wrap when you go out, but, you know, in the words of my my late, late, great, grand, great, 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 grand Jewish uncle, it couldn't hurt. Um, <laughs> so I, <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. You know, I could, I could hear some Jewish grandmother saying, Why did they name you Kevin? <laughs> Well, you know, my um, my middle name is Yosef. You, you, you know, it's Yosef, so you gotta. <laughs> I'm rocking both worlds, you know. Um, <clears throat> don't be don't be downing on my Celtic ancestors. Uh oh, charge of the battery pack. Uh. Charge of the battery pack, which yeah. means there's extra work. Do we stop? Which one? Uh, the Just camera. That shot? one. Just said charge of it. Okay. Just for a second. Oh, okay. We're still moving. We're still going. It's, it looks like the, the power is still working. It's going, but I had to do that. Oh, okay. Thanks for letting me know. Yeah. It's coming. Thank you. Um, so for cancer this week, greetings cancer, you know, you've got the power. And most of the planets are in the uh, public house, right? We got the power. Wasn't that, that, was, that was cute. That was a nice trick. Thank you, Marm. And, <clears throat> and now, you know, that... Um, Jupiter's moving into your ninth house. I mean, this is big. Suddenly, this isolated, closed-off world that was kind of threatening gets more joyous. It gets more open. It gets more positive. There's opportunities coming to you. Um, you got your PPP loan. Um, <laughs> okay. You're collecting unemployment from a job you never had. <laughs> <clears throat> And life is beautiful, you know, you're having as much fun as you possibly can contain and handle. Why not? You know, if you're going to go, <clears throat> go big or don't go at all, right? <laughs> and, um, you know, sun's transiting your 11th house with Uranus, so you're meeting all kinds of crazy, wild, nutty, kooky people. <clears throat> and um, some of them might have some good advice for you, some of them may not. Um, one thing about Saturn, when it's transiting the 8th house, it is not fun. It can be depressing. It can be ego-crushing. And so we have to kind of give ourselves a little bit of mercy. But this Jupiter going into the ninth is like... It's, it's like finding the lo winning lotto ticket on the ground in some cases, you know. And really, what is good fortune or wealth? It's really happiness. Are you happy? If you're happy, you've got it made. And, and that's the real deal. If you can just... Phew, Skip all the externals and work on the internals. All this stuff in the outer world will come to you. It will. It really works that way. But it's a, it's a big, it's a mind F to get your head in that right space to get there. But some people do. And you know who they are. They're very attractive and you love them. I'm not talking about people just attractive because they're young and they got a hot bod. I mean, you know, and they're female. I mean, that, you know, that's... That just goes without saying. That's just the law of the jungle. <laughs> Speaking of law of the jungle, <laughs> greetings, Leo, and welcome to your horoscope. <laughs> oh, I had to do that. Um, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> it's like you've got people that need to hear from you, and there is a kind of like your career performance requires technology, it requires some inspiration, it requires some surprise gestures. And now with Venus and Mercury and the North Node moving through your 11th house, it's like you've got the smart people, you've got the beautiful people, and you've got the weird people all around you. And um, then you also have the person that does not like you and has your back. That's Mars in the 12th house they're talking. I mean, it's like, hmm... I think a lot of times Mars in the 12th house is also about being able to purge what we don't like about ourselves, what we wish we could change about ourselves and make better. And that's part 
you know, through prayer, meditation, mantra practice, giving to the poor, hanging out with godly people, and doing some volunteer work. That's a, that's a simple solution. It's not that hard. And you go do that, Leo, and you'll be fine. <clears throat> now we're coming into the land of Virgo. My little Virgo. Welcome, 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 Virgo. Okay. Welcome to your horoscope. So, I mean, Mercury is now moving into your midheaven along with Venus. You're looking smart. You're sounding smart. You're looking good. And um, because of Venus's presence, in fact, some of your creative ideas are going to be applied to the workplace. And it's going to be interesting because I think you're going to facilitate a lot more money and income in your life over the next couple of months. And you're going to be really surprised. Like, wow, I didn't expect this to happen, but my goodness gracious, it's happening. And I'm I'm feeling good about it. <clears throat> okay. So, um, in, the, in the way things are working this week, I mean, it's like, transform the way you nurture your own heart. Um, work hard for the things that you believe in that are going to help the collective. That's, um, that's Saturn in Aquarius in the sixth for you. Um, Relationship-wise, uh, you're going to meet more spiritual people. You're going to meet more people that want to do mantras with you. You're going to meet more people that want to get their health trip together. You're going to meet more people that are going to offer a certain sense of wealth, beauty, rest, recuperation, relaxation, education, expansion in your life, all of this. Travel, people that want to travel with you and go places. Ooh. Yeah. You have fun. There's fun. You know, road trips with Cosmic Hev are very fun. It's true. I, and, you know, maybe I'll have a lottery and I'll take one of you on a road, or, or maybe several of you, a few, you know, maybe like three or four of you on a road trip with Cosmic Hev. It's not, it sounds like an idea. We'll go stargazing and camping and all kinds of fun things, cook gourmet meals, um, and have a really good time. Okay. So, we have... The moon this weekend in your eighth house. So it's kind of like, it's a good time to work on spiritual stuff. It's a good time to listen a lot. Let other people have their power. Let them take you, help you, do their thing. And then, um, you know, by the time Sunday rolls around, you know, the real adventure starts. You know, the real adventure starts to begin. Because, I mean, we are having a new moon this week, aren't we? <clears throat> I didn't I wasn't really thinking about that but yeah we have a new moon occurring on Tuesday and um, that moon happens at 12 p.m. <clears throat> and um, I think it's in the you know I'm not really sure it's like probably a tail end of Barani beginning of Critica <clears throat> Barani's about the love the Venus the passion, but it's kind of immature. Critical is about the hardcore truth and isn't afraid to cut a bitch. <laughs> so we'll see, you know, you know what I mean? Well, I know this much that the moon will be in Critica at least shortly after the new moon, if not, you know, right with the new moon, because the new moon will be in um, sidereal Aries. So yeah, we got this new, but the first part, yeah, those first parts, so um, I certainly should look at that. There's got to be some kind of degree thing in this thing for me to for me to decipher this. This is just absolutely crazy that they don't do that. But yeah, I mean, it's, um, it is what it is. Um, moon by sign, new moon. Yeah, it happens then, and it's... Yeah, it's, you know, it's getting towards, we're going to say it's a Critica new moon. I'm going to just put myself out there. New moon and Critica, all about truth. And um, it's deep truth. It's tr tr truth about other people's power for you. But anyhow, greetings Libra. Welcome to your horoscope. Um, what can we say about you this week? Well, you know, with this new moon and everything in the eighth house, ooh, um, <clears throat> it's going to be um, a lot of changes, you know. There's a lot of release. There's a lot of letting go. 
And, you know, you're, if things aren't perfect, you know, you might be having to pay back for some old karma. You not, may not be feeling great. It's really important to, like, watch what you eat during this period of time, too, because, you know, it's like you don't want to poison yourself with something bad, you know, like food poisoning. Um, yeah. But, you know, Venus and Mercury moving into your ninth house, it's like you're able to take on higher knowledge. And this really goes well, too, with the Jupiter and Neptune, you know, starting to get in, in the same sign this week, too. It's like spiritual wisdom is where it's at, folks. Um, and it's not just some airy-fairy nebulous thing when you're truly pa happy that's when you're in power it's like when the joy of the lord is my strength you know i know libra loves partnerships and love i mean you know when venus goes in the ninth house it's more like a long distance relationship and look, sometimes those are really fun because there's so much tension imagination and passion building up when the people finally meet that it's like woo smoking you know and it's like may all our relationships be smoking you know just smoking hot that way but Unfortunately, they're not. <laughs> but once you've had one or two that are, you're like, ooh, ooh, yeah. Mm. Can someone else do that? That we did? What? And then, you know, and, and you know, and, and you might find for them it was like that with you, but not for other people, too. You know, we all have our similar, a certain kind of alchemy. And everything for Libra right now this week is relationships. But if you keep them on the more spiritual, integral part, you're going to get the results you really want. That's... There, I said it. Hello, Scorpio. Hi. Welcome. It's springtime. Woo! <laughs> it's spring fever, and where I live, spring came early. Um, the clothes got off really quick. They, they came off tonight, actually. And, um, and it's, you know, it's nice to look at the, um, the beautiful physical form of the opposite sex, at least for me it is, you know, and, and sometimes it's, I, I know women that like to look at naked women, you know, they, they like the form of the female, female is a Shakti energy, you know, and, and we, we enjoy that, it's a great distraction, you know, and sometimes it keeps us from doing what we really need to do, um, and so, so that's a warning to you, Scorpio, because I know you like to go there more than any other sign, and, um, you know, this is kind of a relationship time, but relationships could really intensify with Venus and Mercury going into the 8th house. And also, really trust your intuition. Really trust how you feel about these things. Um, before really just letting in and letting on. And then Jupiter, moving into your 5th house. It's like, ah, I love my children so much. You know, I, wa you know, I want to um, do things to support them, to help them, to further on their education, to further their spiritual knowledge. That's the good stuff. And, you know, Jupiter in Pisces is going to be helping Scorpios, especially, you know, in this particular period of it, it's going to really help the, you know, the October Scorpios a lot. You know, you'll get some blessings of this if you if you can keep focused on that spiritual good stuff. Um, you know, it's not like the November ones will get something out of it too, but that, that's going to come more towards the end of the year is my, my gut feeling of that and next year. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, you're good. You got your feet on the ground. You know where you're going. And it's going to be good. All right. Sagittarius. Bada bing, bada boom. Let's talk about you. We, we don't have a lot of time now. Um, so Jupiter and Jupiter ruled sign. Um, huge. In your fourth house. So this could be fixed assets with Neptune. So... If you need to sell a house, need to sell a car, things are a little bit better for that right now. Um, you have to work on health issues. Be consistent with exercise. You might surprise yourself at how much you can do, but don't overdo it and get yourself in an accident. Um, Venus is now in your seventh house, as well as Mercury. So if you've been in a dry spell, you haven't been in a relationship for a while, get ready for all that to change. <coughs> you can make some money this weekend, too. All right. Further on, greetings, Capricorn, and welcome to your horoscope. So, I mean, we all suffer. We all have limits. Um, Taurus time is a good time for Capricorns in general because it rules the fifth house. Uranus is there, too. It's like a trickster. Um, you know, you really want to drive 
somebody nuts, you know, and for you guys, you know, I mean, just blatant honesty seldom works with your object of, of affection, the woman that you want to engage with. What they want to know about are secrets. So you kind of say, well, I want to tell you a secret, but I'm not really sure. Oh, 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 please tell me, you know, it's kind of like that. It's like this kind of baiting thing you have to, you have to sort of do in order to get their attention in so many cases. Um, I, know, I hate when I talk about like this, but, uh, you know, it's, it's like, you know, you, you don't, they're not having the same response. Just, you know, you might work out all you want and you have a great bod and you're looking great, but they're not going to just like cream your jeans over it and just like drop everything. No, they're looking for quality. Are you emotionally stable? Do you like kids? Do you, you know, <laughs> can you handle me when I, right before I'm on my period? You know, it'll be, it's more like things like that, you know. <laughs> you know it's, yeah, well, I mean, you know, it's reality. It's nature. It's a jungle out there, folks. And um, Capricorn, you have a lot of insights right now, and you're much more kind of introspective. You're in more of like that stay at home, I've got to pay attention to my personal life right now. All this outer fluff is not going to do anything for me. It's good thinking on your part, you know. Um, Saturn says, you know, watch your dollars, and Jupiter says, make new friends. Well, greetings, Aquarius, and welcome to your horoscope. You know, and, and Jupiter's so Jupiter's losing, leaving you for a little bit. It's going to come back, though. You know, it's going to come back. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm coming back. But, I mean, during this period right now, it's like there's more money to be made than you ever thought. You know, if you were someone who was making crystal jewelry, you know, and you're an Aquarius rising, you're going to sell more crystal jewelry. I, I just know it, you know. Um, talismans. Things that are specially art pieces that are spiritually or personality connected to someone. People love things that are customized, you know, and, and I see that kind of customized talismans, protective pieces just for you. Ooh, that could work. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll make one for you. Get, you know, contact me and we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll make... We'll make a deal. I'm sure it'll be a bargain compared to some of these other uh, New Age ripoffs. <laughs> um, but anyhow, it's a uh, it's a good time. Um, and, and forget that I said that. Comparisons aren't good. <laughs> You're happy with it. Um, you know, it, it's about you know now that the Sun and Uranus are so close to each other, it's like you're kind of like in this like personal family identity crisis. It's like, what did I inherit that I became this person? Because I can guarantee you, even if you don't get along with your family or whatever, there's been somebody in your family that's very much like you. Um, I, you know, I have an uncle that passed away, and I looked more like him than any of his kids did. And we have this weird similarity, and I still feel that. Yeah, no, we were different sun signs, but we were both born kind of near Year of the Dog. It was, yeah, I think he was actually a rooster just before it, but for some reason he had that vibe. And it's hard to, you know, it's hard to tag it, but he was awesome. And that's all I can say is awesome. And you, you're you awesome, Aquarius. You're in your heart right now. You're getting good information. And um, you can do some really amazing creative work this week. A breakthrough is happening, folks. Okay. Well, Pisces, we're ending it off with you. Jupiter now in your sign this week. Woohoo! We're taking off with that. It's it's a good thing. It's a powerful thing. Um, and um, this is going to kick off a summer of ma much good fortune for you. And it's like, well, it's about time. And um, I would focus on writing, communication, people in your neighborhood. Um, and, you know, follow the, the patterns of where the moon's going this week. Because you're going to make more connections and by next week, you're going to feel renewed and charged up. This is Cosmic Kev of the Planetary Persuader. Thanks for joining me. We'll do this again next week.